Arbiscato. Here. Ms. Alberti? Here. Ms. Alcuri? Mr. Grillo? Here. Ms. Jarvis? Here. Ms. Malinak? Here. Mr. Musto? Here. Mr. Schweck? Here. Mr. Vuno? Here. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the following meetings. Annual notice was sent to the Herald and News, the Record, the South Bergenite, the Observer, the Township Clerk, and posted in the lobby of the Town Hall and Board Office, setting forthcoming scheduled work meetings and public meeting of the Board. Motion. Should we, should we go right here now? Yeah. Motion to go into pub, uh, executive session. So moved. Mr. Uh, Mr. Bruno's asked for a motion to go into executive session. We have it. Will be, it, it has a first and a second. It's regarding uh, personnel and anticipated litigation. We should be out, I would think, in like 15, no, no more than 15 minutes. Okay. I hear a motion to reopen the public portion of the meeting. Second. Second. Roll call. Mr. Abrascano. Four. Ms. Alberti. Four. Ms. Alcuri. Four. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Four. Ms. Malinak. Four. Mr. Musto. Four. Mr. Schweff. Four. Mr. Vuno. Four. Public hearing. Signing sheets.
Your motion to avoid exception. Roll call. Mr. Abascado. Four. Ms. Alberti. Four. Ms. Alcuri. Four. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Four. Ms. Malinak. Four. Mr. Musto. Four. Mr. Schweck. Four. Mr. Uno. Four. And that was items number 38 and 39. Roll call. Mr. Abrascato. Four. Ms. Alberti. Four. Ms. Alcuri. Four. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Ms. Malinak. Four. Mr. Musto. Four. Mr. Schweck. Four. Mr. Vuno. I abstain. Education and Curriculum Committee, Ms. Alcuri. Roll call. Mr. Abascado. Four. Ms. Alberti. Four. Ms. Alcuri. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Four. Ms. Malinak. Four. Mr. Musto. Mr. Schweck. Four. Mr. Vuno. Four. Policies and Rules Regulations Committee. Mr. Abascado. The board members take successive committees the following list of actions under the category of Rules and Regulations Committee. They so indicate now in a separate motion for each of the accepted actions will be entertained. Hearing none, I make a motion that we accept items one through five. Second. Roll call. Mr. Abascado. Four. Ms. Alberti. Ms. Alcuri. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Four. Ms. Malinak. Four. Mr. Musto. Four. Mr. Schweck. Four. Mr. Bruno. Four. Athletic Student Activities and Substance Abuse Committee. Any. It's okay, sure. Go right ahead. Any board member who takes exception to any of the following listed actions? Category of Student Activities and Deposition Committee may so indicate now that the motion for each of the accepted actions will be entered in the future. Hearing none, I move to take one or two of the exceptions. Roll call. Mr. Abascado. Four. Ms. Alberti. Four. Ms. Alcuri. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Four. Ms. Malinak. Four. Mr. Musto. Four. Mr. Schweck. Four. Mr. Bruno. Four. Community Relations, Safety, and Security. Mr. Musto. Any board member who takes exception to any of the following list of actions under the category of safety and security committee may so indicate now and a separate motion for each of the accepted actions in our team. Hearing none, I move to make uh, numbers, uh, numbers one through four be adopted. Second. Roll call. Mr. Abascano. Four. Ms. Alberti. Ms. Alcuri. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Four. Ms. Malinak. Four. Mr. Musto. Four. Mr. Schweck. Four. Mr. Bruno. Four. Is there any unfinished business for the board here? Mr. Grillo? No? New business. Who would like to read it? Mr. Grillo. Any board member takes exception to any of the following listed actions under the category of new business committee. They so indicate now in a separate motion for each of the accepted actions will be entertained. Yes. I would like a number five to accept the list. Number five. Okay. So this motion is for one to four and six to eleven. Do I have a second? Roll call. Mr. Abascado. Four. Ms. Alberti. Four. Ms. Alcuri. Four. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Four. Ms. Malinak. Four. Mr. Musto. Four. Mr. Schweck. Four. Mr. Bruno. Four. Four. 
second. Roll call. Mr. Abascano. Four. Ms. Alberti. Ms. Alcuri. Yes. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Four. Ms. Malinak. Four. Mr. Musto. Mr. Schwepp. Mr. Bruno. Four. Motion carried. Superintendent's report. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for taking uh, more than 15 minutes, but the business we have to attend to obviously was quite important and necessitated that additional time. Before uh, I get into the superintendent's report, uh, I'd like to draw your attention to the back of the packet that was distributed, and there's a message in the close of the school message from the superintendent. I will go through that. You can read it at your leisure. At this time, uh, in the agenda, you had experienced that we have approved 15 staff members uh, 
uh, for employment in the Lindhurst School District, effect for this uh, upcoming 2016-17 uh, school year. And that's a result of the last couple of months of committees that have been assembled representing representative of a cross-section of our school district educational community, teachers, supervisors, principals, going through, we're delighted to announce, hundreds of applications, going through a paper screening process, identifying, at least on paper, uh, who, which candidates surfaced to the top and merited uh, an interview. The committees interviewed uh, dozens of people. Mrs. DeMarco, Assistant Superintendent, and I, of course, accept recommendations of finalists from the committees, and then we conduct at central office interviews. And they're quite rigorous. It's quite a rigorous process because you as parents um, and community members deserve to have the best possible people that we can attract to our school district because great schools, as you know, are built one classroom at a time. And we have an ethical and moral responsibility to put in front of that classroom phenomenal teachers and we take that job which is probably one of the most important aspects of central office administration we take that job very seriously we have a number of people who have been uh, that were just hired that have been uh, sitting in these interviews now uh, and I and some of them are in attendance here this uh, this evening and I'd like to introduce them just to stand and be recognized by the Board of Education and of course by the general public uh, in attendance with us this evening. Uh, Tony Ann Devlin, Tony, or Tony, please stand in the room. Tony Ann is an LDTC, Learning Disability Teacher Consultant, and she will be getting uh, her work here in Lindhurst with our children on September the 1st. Uh, Jennifer Lambert, Jennifer, hired as a middle school mathematics teacher. I'm also delighted to introduce to you Mr. Felix Diaz. Felix, please stand for the Felix is an ESL teacher. And these are three. If I've missed anyone, are there any new hires that are here? Oh, she just, she was just here. Casey, stand up. Casey. Casey is a, a remedial mathematics teacher and she, she's an incredible young and dynamic and uh, uh, soon to be a master teacher I'm certain with a little more experience but she's a fantastic hire. And Angela, Angela where are you? Angela Lenzi. and language therapist and we're of course also delighted to attract someone of her caliber uh, to the district. Congratulations to all of you. Welcome. <laughs> to have you as a member of our educational community. Thank you so much. Okay. Every month we recognize the achievements of our faculty and staff. Uh, this evening is no different. In fact, uh, being the last uh, school board meeting of this particular academic school year, we're delighted to recognize the creme de la creme. Teachers who, and staff members who have been identified by the, uh, the respective schools, principals, uh, school improvement teams, at each school they identified this year who they thought was an outstanding teacher and someone that merited attention at the Bergen County Education Association and the Bergen County Superintendents Association annual end of the year dinner, which was held at the Fiesta just a couple of weeks ago. Mrs. DeMarco and I will be introducing these individuals and reading uh, some of their credits and achievements for your attention, of course, and for your recognition. And there are tremendous rewards of rec recognition. These folks, are they model great teaching, not only in terms of the content, but also the pedagogy and the relationships that they establish with their children in the classroom, with their colleagues, and with the administrative team. First, I'd like to call up Jennifer Scardino. Jennifer?
please bear with, it, with us for another maybe 10 minutes because I think these folk, folks certainly deserve uh, the recognition that they're getting this evening. Mrs. DeMarco and I will be reading a narrative, which has been a short narrative, which has been prepared by the principals, the supervisors of the individuals that are being recognized. Jennifer Scardino is a major asset to the teaching and leadership in the Lindhurst Public School System. As a teacher in the district for 16 years, Jennifer exemplifies what a true professional should be. She's an active participate in numerous district-wide committees, and she even chairs a number of them. She has been the LEA, the Lindhurst Education Association president, for six years. I won't go into all of her college credits and whatnot, <laughs> but um, she has been a chief negotiator for several LEA contracts and is in the process of negotiating at this particular point in time with the NJA and, of course, with the Board of Education. Along with being a member of the SKIP team, that's a school improvement team, the INRS team, the school safety team, the district DAC committee, the evaluation committee for the Charlotte Danielson instructional model and evaluation model, and she was a liaison for a school for almost a year during the principal's absence four years ago. She is one of the finest, most caring teachers who always puts others first and makes sure everyone is treated fairly. For these reasons and many more, she's been chosen for the Bergen County Teacher of the Year for 2016 from Columbus School. It's an honor and privilege to work with Jennifer Scordino. children, of course, and in the school uh, district, they just completed grades three. Who just completed grade three? And grade two completed grade three. <laughs> and kindergarten, who just <laughs> She performed uh, her student teaching responsibilities as a special education teacher here in the Lindhurst Public School District. Should I announce the year? 
Mr. Vestal said, 2002. <laughs> she was only 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> she taught special education and middle school mathematics. Uh, she's been a mentor for provisional teachers. She is the co-advisor for the Jefferson School Student Council. She's a member of the Jefferson School SKIP Team, School Improvement Panel. She is a district, uh, member of the District Technology Leadership Committee. She's engaged in instructional coaching and is on the Instructional Coaching Committee. She's a member of the Remedial Task Force Committee and Measures of Academic Map, Measures of Academic Progress Review Committee. A phenomenal educator. Let's once again congratulate her. in the classroom as a parent from the relationships that she has established with her students, her willingness to go above and beyond what is expected of a teacher, and from her students' achievements in the classroom. Ms. Eckford has served on the Lincoln School's SKIP team, was Vice President of Lincoln School PTA for two years, is currently an advisor for our student council, is an integral part of our lunchtime tutoring program, and was selected by her peers to receive the Governor's Educator of the Year Award. Her contributions to Lincoln School of a, are of paramount importance to the success of her students and to the building as a whole. We congratulate Dawn. <laughs> Kristen has been 
been serving the students and families of Lindhurst for 18 years. She is a consummate professional who puts the needs of her children before herself. Mrs. Marin has served on many district curriculum committees, contributing to the success of students throughout the Lindhurst Public School District. She's always willing to lend a helping hand and will never shy away from taking on additional work and responsibilities at Roosevelt School. She is truly an asset to the school and the Lindhurst Public School System for many, many reasons. Mrs. Marin can consistently be seen working and planning into the early evening hours during the school year. All of this while being a wonderful mother and, uh, to her three children at home. Mrs. Marin has truly found the perfect balance of being both a sheriff at home and a sheriff in the classroom. We have to talk to Mr. DeCourcy. Mrs. Marin, you are admired and respected by the faculty of Roosevelt School, the Lindhurst School community as well. Congratulations on this well deserved. And now for our final <laughs> recognition. And as much as I would absolutely love to read this, it would not be fair to Mrs. Klein, who raced over here and kept in touch with me in the attempt to New York <laughs> to be here to present this to a very special high school educator, Miss Tanya Pastor. She has brought our newspaper, The Lighthouse, when she came eight years ago, I think it maybe came out three times a year, um, into a classroom situation where it comes out once a month. Um, and each year, we have been winning more and more awards. Just this year alone, um, I'm going to get this right, I wrote it down. The, she, we won first place in the American Scholastic Press Association for our newspaper. Scholastic Press Association, we won 13 awards.
We love these surprising words. <laughs> and um, also receiving that same recognition is receiving that same recognition from the success of each and every student in our classrooms. So thank you for uh, being in attendance this evening. I appreciate uh, you being here to help us celebrate the outstanding uh, educational program that we have in Lindhurst, and it's because of the outstanding educators and the outstanding parents, caregivers, families that we have in this tremendous community. We are absolutely on a path to greatness, and it takes everyone to make a maximum contribution. So I thank you this uh, for all of your support, encouragement, and effort this year, and we look forward to even greater things during the next school year. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>
Therefore, Lindhurst High School is now jeopardizing the acceptance of some of these students at colleges of their choices. Members of the board, we are asking that you reconsider the decision to eliminate ASL from the curriculum. Should this not be an option, we ask that you consider some alternatives for the students who have already taken ASL 1. We ask that you consider phasing out American Sign Language. If the decision is made to phase out American Sign Language, you can bring back ASL with the caveat that no new students can take the course, however, allow for the students needing the additional year to complete it. Finally, in doing some research, there are alternatives for those already who have already taken ASL 1. The school district could allow for an online course to be taken, such such as, and I did a little research on, on uh, the internet, there's a company called signingonline.com. It's an American Sign Language Instruction for High School Curriculum Credit. You can bring in an adjunct or part-time instructor to teach the course for those who need the additional year. It is our understanding that Ms. Francis had an in-room sign language assistant. Maybe she could teach the course for one year to get those who are requiring the last year. Or simply allow students to take the course at another school who offers ASL and will work in conjunction with the Lindhurst High School. Please consider the students, the, dis excuse me, the disruption to their schedules, their future, and the risk of being accepted to the colleges of their choice. And thank you for listening to us. <laughs> ago when it came to our attention that we, we may be losing the teacher. Um, this is an extremely important language to me because I happen to have a, a deaf member of my family um, who just had a beautiful baby boy who is not hearing impaired, so that, would, that was a wonderful thing. Um, and I've grown up around this person and know at every family event there is her interpreter, and there is her signer, and she has become as much a part of the gatherings as every other family member there. Um, so I do understand the importance of this language in connecting with so many other people in the world. I cannot stress to you the struggle that we're having with getting instructors for ASL simply because the private sector provides them with many more financial opportunities and many more um, growth opportunities, unfortunately, that right now the field of education is providing, and they are few and far between. Um, I love the recommendations that you made, and we're going to continue to work, which is why we're not pulling it out of our program of studies. But for us, sustainability is most important, and we do not want to bring in a program or say that a program is going to continue when we know it cannot be sustained to the depths that we need all of our instruction to be offered. And when we're teaching a language, we want to know that not only can we do the two years, but we can go the three, because many colleges are now requiring the three years of a language. Um, I can assure you to the other point um, that we are fully prepared. We have encountered this in the past when our French program was no longer sustainable. Um, we do have plans in place that colleges do accept 
for the fact that when a program is no longer available to students, they do ac accept this letter as a waiver um, for them to either explore another language or for uh, showing proof why that language couldn't continue. Um, so we will be supporting you in that way. But first and foremost, what we're doing now behind the scenes is working to secure not only one ASL instructor, but two. So that when we bring, when we bring this back, we bring it back for, for the full for the full gamut. I mean, we really think it's that important. Um, unfortunately, we just find ourselves in a situation right now that it's, it's not sustainable. It would be unfair to not make this decision prior to the start of the year to place all of you in a class and not have an instructor and have you sitting in a, in a study hall, essentially, for months and months until we, until we found one. Um, so I love the, the ideas that you put forward. We're going to continue to pursue it. Just so you know, we have been in touch with the, um, our virtual high school program, which is the program that's approved by our district to use. They too are dealing with the same situation. There's a, a craving for this at many high schools, but unfortunately they can't secure the instructors to actually put it forward. So we're gonna keep working behind the scenes, but I applaud you, I commend you, I know the work that you're doing behind the scenes with your petitions. I love the parents are getting involved in supporting this. If, if we're talking about curriculum, that is a wonderful, wonderful thing for our district. Um, we'll, keep, we'll keep trying to support you. Um, please keep in touch with your guidance counselors for the, for the procedures that follow. Um, and if you really are facing a situation whereby the languages that are available to you are not languages that you're looking to explore, speak to your counselors and see what other options are, are in fact possible. Um, perhaps through VHS there might be something we can do. Are we going to speak? Can I ask a question? Are you on the sheet? Yes, I am. Yes. What is your name? Julie Bruno. I only ask because I want to check. No, no, no. <laughs> We're going to get to you, Julie. There's a whole bunch of questions. I just have a question about what it, uh, some of the points you made and how it affects my daughter. Who that, that's okay. Come on up and do it. It doesn't matter. You can jump over. I here. Um, <laughs> no, you can say. Um, no, I just have a question because from my daughter who has AS or already took ASL one, she was put in a time course which she does not want. So what is her recourse? She's saying talk to her guidance counselor. She did, and she was told, this is it. This is what you have to deal with. So um, I understand where you're coming from, and I appreciate your um, your thoughts and, and words, but I don't feel like that's actually happening in the school. Okay. So I, and to Tammy's points, um, this, you know, the children that took ASL 1 should have the opportunity to finish it, whether it is through a temporary teacher, she made the point that the assistant was willing to teach it, but was told, no. I mean, that is what we're hearing. So I just think that those children that took it, you need to come up with a recourse other than, sorry, you're taking a town. I, I, I phasing do, out phases. Yes, I, I, do, I, I do hear, and, and in a situation whereby we could secure an instructor who is a certified teacher who has the state certification to teach a course, at, at, of American Sign Language, it, it's not just that someone who signs can then be mm -hmm. a teacher. Right. There's a very, very strong certification process in place. Um, again, we have been for months reaching out to other districts, to consortiums, to colleges, yes. trying to secure someone. That That is not something, we're, we're in the midst of it like many other districts are. Um, I will, I, I, I do hear the, the concerns with the placement in Italian 1. Um, again, we have multiple factors going on here with the situation regarding scheduling right. and, and placement of, of classes. And then of course, how many Spanish 1 seats are, are open because that's the other option that we have. Um, but again, bringing your, your information to the forefront tonight is something that I need to now go back and do a little work looking into. Um, and we will make sure, if you, you know, through email, through whatever else, just, as we have options open, we'll share them with you. I'm, totally, I'm just concerned that she's going to end up taking Italian wine, right. and then if it comes back, she's going to have now okay. another waste of year. So, I think that we need to figure out, or, or you need to figure out what to do with these children that took ASL 1 so that it's not a wasted year and they're not forced to have, and I don't think, I know you said a letter could do, but I don't think that's really going to work when they go to college, that here's a letter that says my school and stuff, you know. Well, I will tell you that with colleges, because remember, we have many colleges now, um, Ms. Rowan spoke to two years ago language, 
we're finding most three. colleges now. Absolutely. So, so, so if she doesn't get second uh, ASL two, then she's lost that opportunity to do three because she's going to be a junior. Well, this is this is what I, I want to be able to explain to you. What this what that what our letter does is it serves as a reason, a rationale as to why in the transcript the student started with one language and switched to another language for two years. And I will just tell you honestly that colleges do accept that when something is no longer offered in the curriculum that's presented so they're still doing three years now i can't again i can't you know you're speaking about doing italian one and then next you're bringing back asl i i don't i don't know what the possibilities are for that and again i cannot in good conscience bring back a program that cannot go to the depths of instruction that we firmly believe in so it's not a matter of just getting one teacher for this to bring us back to where we were. It's a matter of securing and sustaining a, a full-fledged interesting. Program. It's interesting you said that because my niece, when she started the ASL, when you started the program three years ago or two years ago, you didn't have a, a regular teacher in place. No, so she, she kind of, so what we're asking you to do for our first year kids, you already did. So I'm just wondering if we can figure out something where those children are not faulted and penalized for something they had no control over. So, you know, you've done it in the past, and I totally get where you're coming from, but it's not like I'm asking you to do something you haven't done. So I would rather them be able to do the program to the best of your ability and get their two years and continue a program they truly love than go and take another class in another language that they're not gonna like, they're not gonna do well in, and they're not gonna use. If, if, I could, if I could tell you that we had the possibility and the potential of securing a teacher who could What, fact what about the assistant teacher that was teaching in that the, class? The, I, you know, again, we've, we've been doing a lot, of, a lot of inquiry, and I can't speak about personnel matters. I can't speak about certifications. What I can tell you is that we find ourselves in a place after many months of searching that we cannot secure someone for this position, either in a part-time capacity or in a full-time capacity. So we had to make a really tough decision, and that's, that, that is, in fact, what we did here. Um, and again, I, I'm just a strong believer in sustainability. I certainly don't want to impose any, any um, infractions upon people who are part of a program that couldn't be sustained. All I can say is that in good conscience, I can't, in fact, place everyone on hold and say maybe we'll get somebody when I know the likelihood for many months is that we can't do that. So I just have to, to, to face, the, face the reality that this will remain in our program of studies and when we can bring it back in a sustainable so, fashion, we will. But as of, as of right now, it is not an offered course. So the ASL1 students have no recourse and that is now a wasted course and they're going to have to go into the language. I'm going to trust that it's not a wasted course, that in fact that learning Wasted of course them. in regards to their, their, their GER and their, the, the, their grades. You know, in other words, they're not going to have two languages, they're not going to have two years of the sign language, they're going to have one year of sign language and one year of something else. Or one year of something else, or two years of another language. I'm still going to just believe that clearly tonight serves as a testament that this was not a waste of time. It exposed them and opened them to something that interested them. It made them able to connect with the world in another way. And based on the, the interest that these some of these students have carried forward, I'm going to hope that that's something that can, you know, that, that will continue with, within them when the opportunities come. Can you say that as well? Um, I am on, my name's Elsa Todd. I'd like to know how the decision was made that even if the program was going to be done away with, why was there no choice given to the parents as to what language their child could pursue going forward? I have done substantial research, and I find that most colleges don't find Italian to be a desirable language. They consider Spanish, they consider French, Mandarin Chinese is another that's very popular right now. Italian's not sought out. I find it disturbing that my daughter was just placed into Italian without any consideration for her thoughts or mine. Additionally, I know a very nice way to sell teacher that has a certification for interesting. <laughs> there you go. Very well. 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 Very well.
acknowledge the, the concerns that you presented. I do want to acknowledge the one other thing. We do have a very successful Italian program. Again, another program that was begun and not actually sustained. So our, a part of our programming now is to sustain that, to make sure that we can offer Italian at every level, the same as we're doing with Spanish, and continue that to the AP level. So I certainly don't want to underestimate any of the other programs that we have simply because this program is not is, is not taking place now. Um, but you know, we, you bring up excellent points, and again, as I mentioned to Ms. Roman, we will continue to move forward with these considerations, um, and it's going to take some time and thought and, and further research into it. So we thank you for your time, we thank the students for their time, um, and again, the, the only purpose here was to understand that we are about sustainability and depth in our programming, not just doing something rash. So um, if you can share that information with me regarding the person who seems to be interested in this. Uh, we would be interested and I know there are many, many other districts that would be extremely interested. I would, but I mean, I, I guess my question is to what is sustainability? Because as you know, there's a wait list to get into this program. I understand it may be hard to find a faculty member to fill it, but when there's such a strong desire, I think you're going to have more desire on the part of the students to have a sustainable program. I know many of the students that would gladly do this in four years. Exactly. We have other classes that do it for take two years because it's a requirement. They have to get out. But and again, that's just it. And it's not. It's for us to make sure that we are meeting the needs of all students. And it would be unfair to only offer the two years. We would want to make sure that we offer four years for all of those students who not only want to go ahead and pursue it, but who are going to need the three years for their college requirements. Because sometimes they don't know until the end of sophomore year, early junior year, even if they're looking at a college that requires the third year. How can we follow okay. up with them? Um, you do the research on the points that can work forward. How can we follow up other than going to our guidance counselors? Is there any way we could follow up? Is there any way we could have any dialogue about what's going to be your research? Well, that, that's exactly where I want this to lead to. I want this to lead to further dialogue, to further consideration. I want to look into some of the points that you've presented about the barriers and the obstacles that you faced, as well as some of the um, people that perhaps you, you know, based on your information to me, you can clearly yeah, connect with. Exactly. So let's, um, let, let's have those conversations and we'll move forward in that direction. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Thank you for your time. Right, is there anyone out there that that's on this list that's had any has any new points or new things to add to this? Hello, I'm Amanda Roman. Uh, do you have anything new, Amanda? Well, I just wrote down my comments when you guys were um, having your meeting on the outside. Okay. So I I'm gonna say exactly what I wrote down just so I don't forget what I was gonna say. Um, well. I did not recognize anyone on the board besides Ms. DeMarco, consider considering she was my principal my senior year. So hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Um, well, I am an alumni from LHS, and I went to elementary school from Roosevelt. Been here my whole life. Um, I came here for the support for the a ALS class. Um, my family are all Puerto Rican, 100%, just saying. And my little brother um, decided to, instead of taking Spanish, because um, my grandmother in Puerto Rico doesn't speak English, instead of taking Spanish, he decided to help others with a bigger mindset, considering that there are, like, we, you can't really see the posters all the way from the back, but, like, we can see them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like, there's certain things, like, we wrote two out of three um, newborns or uh, babies are born deaf or partially deaf, um, and I wrote, it wouldn't be fair for the kids who already took the course and had to take two more years, what everyone else has been saying, but going into my freshman year, I originally, my, myself, I originally wanted to take French, but they got rid of that, like I, as an eighth grader, I was like, oh, I want to take French when I'm in high school, because I had to start thinking about that. They gave me the paper to write everything of what electives and everything I wanted to write. I originally wanted to take French, but when I got into high school, they got rid of it. So I had to take Spanish, because I did not want to take Italian. But two years after, when I was a sophomore, they got rid of it. They like got rid of Italian, brought in sign language. So opinion stated, they got rid of the ones that I wanted to take for the sign language. And so many people want to take sign language. Like me being an alumni, going into high school, this high school, wanted to take a different 
one, and I wound up taking Spanish with Miss Vega, but I didn't specifically get the opportunity I originally wanted. And now that it's bringing back, maybe Italian, French, whatever might come back, everyone now wants a different language. They want sign language. And I feel like that's better because I wanted French. And instead of, all right, so my, since they took out French and now Italian's in, I wind up going with Spanish because not a lot of people, we asked my little brother, would you want Italian? We asked my little brother if he wanted Italian, and he's getting put into it. So don't think that's necessarily fair. That's what we're going to have to look at. Okay? Thank you. I'd like to, uh, my name is Melissa Minato. Um My daughter is now a sophomore. She took ASL um, one, more for personal reasons. Her aunt is deaf. And for years, she couldn't communicate with her. So within the first month, she had enough knowledge that she was able to Skype her aunt in Spain and do sign language. And her aunt was so thrilled that somebody actually took time to learn her language. It varies a little bit, but not that much. And now, she's here she is going into a sophomore year. She didn't even get Italian. She got stuck with some other elective that she doesn't even know what it is. <coughs> and she would really like to continue it. I've seen her use her sign language skills so many places. We were out food shopping one day, and this deaf gentleman came up, and he was talking to an employee, and the employee's just like, I have no clue what you're saying. And she stepped in, and she signed to him, and he signed back, and she was like, OK sir, it's over there. And he was so happy that somebody understood him. And I've seen her use it so many times, and it breaks my heart as a parent to see this course getting dropped. I mean, she's back there somewhere. My little mini-me, she's back there. She's, I mean, she just absolutely loves it. I mean, we'll sit there while she's getting her physical therapy, and we'll sign back and forth in the room. Or she'll we'll sit there and you know, her father will speak Spanish and we don't understand it. So we'll speak sign language as like a ha-ha type of thing. And it's just something that's so passionate to her. And I really, really don't want to see her, her lose that. Because I know she was looking into taking um, other courses after, you know, the two years in high school to continue it, to maybe be an interpreter for public speaking or be an interpreter for an event or any occasion that they need one because she was just so passionate about it. And again, I, I thank you, and I think you bring up excellent points about the importance of the significance of this language, and we will continue to, to, to remain on our quest to get an instructor. Right now, that was the only reason for the, the removal from, from the program, is simply that we, we, we have been unable to replace the instructor, but we're going to keep keep on that, and um, again, I, I commend your, your, your um, comments and um, just your presence here tonight. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, so, I, I understand. Like, Please say your name. Uh, Sarah Almeida. I'm an upcoming senior at Lincoln High School. And, um, like my aunt had said, my freshman year was the year that we started the assignment program, but they wasn't a teacher, so I understood the whole study hall thing. I totally see what you're trying to avoid. I just want to come up here and share the impact that the program had on my life, because I think it's something worth celebrating. And as I'm coming back to my first college for today, like I just want to share how much good it did me. This program, I just I was so heartwarming to <coughs> since I was little. I've worked with special needs and disabled children, and this program, after taking it, I was able to communicate with with children and adults in the program that I've known since I was ten that I wasn't able to communicate with before, and it brought us so much closer. Like just where we were like when I was even younger and we couldn't talk to them and where we are now, like we do so much more events with them. I, I went from doing one event a month with them to five events a month. And um, it inspired me. I was looking at colleges with deaf studies majors and there's a lot up and coming. And today I visited uh, the College of New Jersey and there was, they have a specific major for deaf education and they were talking about how they look for a full, a full four years in the five core uh, <laughs> five core subjects, which one of them is foreign language, and I had asked, like, what would happen if I only took two years of sign language, and they said, obviously, we understand that your school only offered two years, but their biggest concern is, like, with students being able to place into it. So I think it's, it's, I just think it's something worth sharing, of how important it is, and how much of an impact made in my life, and I want to thank you for having the program for what you did, and keep trying to um, continue it.
but I just want to share how important it is because I encouraged all of my friends that were coming up into the high school to take sign language. And I thought it was such a beautiful program. It taught me so much, not only the language, but like the physical culture. And it helped me understand people that I work with in my everyday life so much better. And just an understanding of people in general. And that's always something that I've been very interested in. And, and being a student who hasn't really, not sure what I want to do with my future, it, like, it helps me find a sense of direction and see something that I'm really passionate about. And you're so self-driven. I know how intrinsically motivated you are. So I just implore you to please continue practicing this, continue sharing it with others, and, and continue seeing what path it's going to take you on as you move forward into college. Thank you. Thank you. I, there's no need to add on to. <laughs> Lori Eckert. Hello. Um, I know that when you have an executive um, meeting that public isn't allowed to be at, there are things discussed that can't be discussed with the public, but with my situation, I would like um, some explanation as to what happened with one of the issues that involved my child. Um, I haven't been contacted regarding the meeting last week, so I would like to know. Um, there's, no, there's nothing that we could discuss in public. Um, I don't even know if there's anything that was discussed tonight that could be brought forward to you. If there is, Mr. Carino or uh, huh? Mr. Marco, but to better answer your question, uh, the lawyer here, Mr. Uh, Delasio, can probably... The issues are still ongoing, obviously, in some direction, and we can't really have those discussions at a public portion of the meeting. Uh, I'm sure you'll you'll be informed of what's what's happening as those decisions are made. But uh, at this point, we, we can't have personnel discussions at the public. Okay, so there's I can't even know if there's any decisions that have been made. Um, I mean, this is, in my opinion, the safety and security of my child was um, Because broken. you can't be informed of what happens at a personnel meeting doesn't mean that there isn't a consideration for the safety of your children. This is just a matter of what, what has to be protected for the other individuals involved too. Uh, some action was taken tonight, it's on your, it's, it was part of the agenda, it was part of the pocket motion that's out there, but all, all action is not I just, I want the board to understand that it wasn't one person that, that did something, it was a, a few people, and I hope that that's taken into consideration, that only one person shouldn't be punished. Um, and I know it's private and it can't be discussed, but, um, you know, that's, this is a big trust violation. Um, what, what's, I mean, you're, you're, you catch, obviously, a, a governing body at a major disadvantage. It can't give you that information. That. But uh, certainly, it, it has been very diligent in its, in its approach to, uh, to resolving that. And obviously, uh, the considerations for safety, not only your child, but every other child in the district, is, uh, is paramount. Well, that concludes the public hearing part of our meeting. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Meeting adjourned.